time for a fun example. So we're going to find the pressure at the top of the quotient of this tube. Right, so the thing about this tube is that there's two liquids. So we have a U-shaped tube closed at one end. The other end is open to the atmosphere. Water fills the side of the tube that includes the closed end, while oil floating on the water fills the side of the tube open to the atmosphere. The two liquids do not mix. The height of the oil above the point which the two liquids touch is 75 centimeters, while the height of the closed end of the tube above that point is 25 centimeters. What is the gauge pressure at the closed end? All right. So what this is describing in words is this diagram here, all right? So we've got a U-shaped tube. We have water filling at the closed end and then oil on top of that. Um, the two liquids don't mix, right, which we already know um, since water and oil don't mix. Um, the height of the oil above this point is 75 centimeters. So it's telling us this height here of the oil is 75 centimeters. And um, that boundary point, the height above that on the other end is 25 centimeters. So the one thing we have to be really careful about this problem is we want to find gauge pressure. All right, specifically gauge pressure at this point here. All right. So let's start labeling these points. And I'm not exactly sure what reference I gave you in terms of a hard copy of this problem, but we do know the pressure at the surface of the oil, since that's open up to the atmosphere, that's atmospheric pressure. Actually, let me label that as P atmosphere. There we go, atmospheric pressure. Now, given that atmospheric pressure, right, we can use the hydrostatic pressure formula to compute the pressure at the boundary of the oil and the water. Right? We can't jump any further because the hydrostatic pressure formula the rho is the density of the fluid, and we have to have that fluid be this, the same fluid. So it has to be here, just oil. We can't do some lower point um, at this spot. But, so let's label that, let's say P1. All right. From that, well, since now, if we kind of analyze the, the water part of the problem, that's all the same fluid now. So since that's the same fluid, well, then we know any horizontal line, the pressure of that, given it's the same fluid, is the same. So across the other side on that dotted line, I'll we'll call that P2, P1 and P2 are equal. And then from that, we can compute P3, um, which is almost what we want to solve. We could, we're going to solve for P3 and then convert, quote unquote, that to gauge pressure. All right, so listing some things we know or some things we might need, all right? Looks like we're dealing with oil and water, so we need the density of those. And we also need, um, here, let me zoom in a little, just so I can write better. Okay, so let's see. So we are dealing with atmospheric pressure. I'm gonna write that down so I remember. It's 1.013 times 10 to the fifth Pascals. All right, we're dealing with density, so we need the density of oil. All right, that is, looking that up in a table, 900 kilograms per meter cubed. We also need the density of water, it's 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Then we're dealing with two different heights. All right, it might be convenient for us. Sorry, I kind of cut this off. Let's call the 75 centimeters. We'll label that as H, and the 25 centimeters, let's label that as some distance D. All right, just so we can distinguish the two and work in variables since we all load that. You can label it H1 and H2. I think that would make a little bit more sense, um, but I'm just being consistent with a hard copy of a problem that I may have given you. I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, so first thing you want to do is find P1, all right, because that's also then P2. So... Let's start listing that over here. P1, which is equal to P2, is going to be equal atmospheric pressure plus rho. In here, since we're dealing with oil, I'll include that subscript, O for oil, G, and then we're dealing with the height of the oil, so that's H. Right? These are all known quantities, so that's nice. Um, 
So we know all these. So we can compute that value. Um, we also can say that uh, looking at the right hand side here, that pressure 3, which is almost what we're trying to solve for, minus that step of finding gauge pressure, that is going to be um, sorry, it's supposed to be P2. The pressure at the depth P2 is going to be the uh, P3, what we're trying to solve. The pressure at the surface of the fluid, um, which is a closed surface here, is pressure C3 plus rho, where rho here is now we're dealing with water, density of water, G times our depth, which we're calling D. All right. So combining these two formulas, right, we see that the pressure, I'm going to move my work over here, pressure at point 3 is going to be atmospheric pressure plus density of oil, GH, minus density of water, GD. So kind of simplifying here, that's atmospheric pressure. Um, let me write that a little better. Um, you've got atmospheric pressure. Let me factor out the acceleration due to gravity. Density of oil times H minus density of water times D. All right. So kind of we can plug and chug here, but I'm going to take one step before I do that because remember we're solving for gauge pressure. So that's going to be pressure 3 minus atmospheric pressure. Right, so then that leads us, well, basically we're going to end up getting rid of that atmospheric term. So the pressure we're solving for is going to be simply acceleration due to gravity times the density of oil times our height H minus density of water times our height D. I'm going to skip plugging in the numbers here. Um, the one thing you need to be careful with, which hopefully you noticed, is we need to convert the centimeters to meters for the height they gave us. And once we do that, do we have sig figs here? We do. We have two significant figures. Um, before rounding for sig figs, I got 4165 pascals. So rounding, we get 4200 pascals. All right. So that's how you approach this kind of problem. You have to break it up kind of step by step. We have two different fluids and you just have to be careful because the hydrostatic pressure formula can only be used for a fluid with the same density. So basically, two different fluids, we have to deal with hydrostatics separately for them. And you also have to be careful with closed parts of containers and open parts of containers and container boundaries. And then finally, be careful because we're computing gauge pressure instead of absolute pressure. All right, so I hope that was helpful.